my version of Anjali would never be wearing a sari. She'd wear those track pants and she'd wear like fab sneakers with it and expensive sneakers with it and make that look good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but which one would you pick as a if it was not a movie? On script level, yeah. maybe I would have gone with Salman's character. But in the film, I think if you watch it as a film, then there's no choice about the ending. It has to be the way it did. Thank you so much for doing this and welcome to Humans of Bombay. We've My pleasure. interviewed once you once before with your husband. Uh, that was a few years ago, so I'm excited to have just you and delve deep into the story. Because obviously he didn't say too much. Yeah. Last time, <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. It was like 1910. <laughs> but it was a really good interview. So I'm going to start with uh, a question that, you know, we all were researching and we're like, we should start with this. Is that um, you have, you're associated with two very powerful surnames, right? It's Mukherjee and Devgan. Mm -hmm. But you're known largely as Kajol. Mm. And that's such a you thing. Like it, it showcases a lot of like individual identity and like just... Just some sass. <laughs> was it like a conscious decision? It actually was a conscious decision because uh, when I wanted to join the films, um, I was given the choice that uh, because my mom also comes from a very, very like strong lineage. And uh, so I was actually like my mom and dad, my dad was like, so what do you want to do? Mm. Like, what do you want to say? What would, what would you like to be known as? And I was like, honestly, I don't want to be associated with my mom also. And I don't want to be associated with my dad also. And uh, so I just want to be known for who I am. Right. And, uh, you know, to make my own identity, which does not, um, you know, depend on anybody else. Yeah. So that's how I came to be known as only Kajol. Just Kajol. Yeah. Don't worry, I'm not changing my name to a sign or <laughs> anything after that. This is it for eternity. This is the name. Yeah. <laughs> And you mentioned your parents, um, you know, you you mentioned in a couple of interviews that you were, you know, very, you were naughty as a child, you were stubborn as a child. Mm -hmm. How, what was your childhood like? Like, what were you... Oh, like? I had a fab childhood. Yeah. I really had a fabulous childhood. Um, my mom was one of those people who was uh, probably working for a lot of my childhood. So she was probably working like 70% of the time. And uh, so I was brought up by, first initially by uh, by my mother's mother, my grandmother, my great-grandmother, uh, my uncle, my aunt also lived with us and they had two daughters as well. Mm. And uh, so we were literally a household filled with like four generations of women. And it was fantastic. It was really, really fantastic. And, you know, people keep asking me about... Uh, Feminism and what does feminism mean to me? And, uh, you know, are you a burn the bra kind of feminist? And I was like, you know, I came from a time I was brought up by women who were just natural feminists. Yeah. Who were, uh, who were never told that they cannot do this. Hmm. And who never taught us either that we could not do this. So if the plumber had to be called or if the, wash if the washing machine was spoiled or, you know, if a bulb had to be changed, it was us. It was just us and we did it all yeah. and we never thought twice about it. And mm. for me, that is feminism yeah. at its core. Mm. So yes, I am a burn the bra kind of feminist. <laughs> but in, I believe that uh, I, I believe that that is what that is what power is. Yeah. That is what feminine power is, mm. is that it should be so very, very natural to you to stand up and say that, OK, I can do this, 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 this very very normally hmm. and uh, you know you don't have to make a big deal out of it yeah. but uh, the fact is that i mean like you don't really need need anybody else yeah. you know to support you yeah. like and we should all have that initial we should all have that innate belief in ourselves you don't have to like scream from rooftops that oh, i'm a yeah. feminist it's just a way and i think most of the time when you talk about feminism also it has to do with i, I feel the biggest people who are impediments yeah. to true feminism are the women themselves. Yes. Definitely. I mean, it's, it's, I truly think that it actually has nothing to do with the men. Yeah. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the men. It has to do with the women not wanting to own up to that, not wanting to, uh, liking some women actually like the fact that, you know, they appear, you know, a little dumber than normal and a little yeah. more useless and a little more brain dead. Yeah. Then, uh, like a damsel in distress. Yeah, yeah, they like it yeah. that way. So, yeah. yeah, so I feel like, I mean, I'm completely the opposite side. Yeah. So, 
don't know how that feels and how that works yeah. really. Yeah. But this has worked obviously clearly. Um, you know, the, just something interesting that you said that I grew up around these like very strong, fierce women. Yeah. How was that? More than, they were not fierce. It was not a fierceness. Right. I, I think that's the wrong word, but very, very feminine women. Hmm. I mean, my grandmother wore the most amazing saris. She always wore these beautiful chiffon floral saris, which were hand painted. Wow. And she was one of the most beautiful women that I have ever seen. Like, I mean, like I know people who have come in and their jaws have dropped when they saw my grandmother. So, I mean, she was literally that stunning, hmm. traffic stoppingly stunning. And uh, so she was very, very feminine. It's not a fierceness. It's more of an innate knowing of that I am a woman and uh, I'm definitely not beneath you. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. I'm definitely your equal, if right. not above you. Yeah. No two ways about it. Whoever you may be in front of me. Yes. So I think, um, and my grandmother was one of those people also who um, was very, very conscious about money, budgeting. In fact, she's the one who brought land and very like correct financially. She made the budget, etc. So she handled the money, she handled the house. My mom also, for that matter, was working. And it's, a, it's all these people around me yeah. who made it a very much, like I say, being feminine yeah. and at the same time owning your power. Right. Both. Like both. Yeah. A healthy mix of both. Yeah. So how did you um, kind of take these, did this, did these qualities, did this environment shape you to who you are today in, in how you operate today the way you are? I think you were more subconscious than conscious. I don't think I actually set out thinking about all this. It's only now as an when I'm much older that I sit down to think that, oh my God, I was blessed with this childhood and mm. oh my God, I was blessed to, you know, be among these people and, um, and these awesome women, uh, you know, my great grandmother would sit and have a drink in the afternoon. Mm. Every afternoon she would be having her drink and, you know, <laughs> I feel like that's just, it was just part of life. Yeah. You know, it was not like, uh, it was not something that we ever looked at or ever said that, you know, whatever. So yeah, that is something that is, it's just subconscious more than, uh, you know, like conscious or learned behavior. Yeah. It's and just, um, yeah, somewhere down the line, what I am today is definitely a product of society, I would say, because I've just been in society and, uh, you know, around society for too long as a public persona yeah. to not let it affect me. Correct. Uh, so yes, there is that little bit of learned behavior, definitely from that side of it. But yeah, I try to, as much as I can, um, embody, I try, I try to live up to them. I don't know whether I can completely or not, but I try. That's so sweet. You also spent a large part of your childhood in boarding school. Mm -hmm. And uh, how was that experience back in the day that was not very as, you know, like, oh yeah, let's go to boarding school. You know, it was a, it was a different time. Mm -hmm. How was that for you? I had a blast. Yeah. I really had a fabulous time in boarding school. I made some of my best friends in boarding school. Um, I also learned, uh, it, it's like, you know, when you go to boarding school, some, it's like somebody put it very well, that, um, you know, when you come out of there, you can be put in any city in the world and you will know how to handle yourself. Yeah. You know, and you live. will know how to live. You will know how to be. And um, we had a dormitory with like, hundred girls mm -hmm. and uh, you just have to learn yeah. it's just a way of learning how to adapt to everybody there are all people from all different stratas of society and there are girls with completely different uh, you know everyone is like like worlds apart yeah. from each other so you'll have the quiet one the shy one the the bully the like every mm -hmm. typical thing that you can think of <laughs> and uh, you have to learn to adapt and live with all these girls so, so which one were you? What student were you? What do you think? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm not telling. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> Next question, please. <laughs> but like, did it ever, uh, you know, come up like, you know, that you were, your mother was obviously in the movies. So did that ever have an impact um, on your student days or in your in your childhood that you know you looked at as like a definitely star, definitely yeah? um definitely no two ways about it i think whenever you are a, a a star child i would say that yes people do look at you regardless of however old you are it doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you're three years old 
or uh, you know if you're 30 yeah. you the, you are looked at with preconceived notions you are looked at with uh, a certain filter and uh, there's nothing really you can do about it but yeah, as a child i know that it did uh, it did you know kind of put my back up a little bit so right. there was a little bit like you know okay theek hai if you want to expect the worst out of me then uh, yeah if you're going to judge me anyways i might as well give you something to judge me for <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's a defiance like okay cool yeah if you're going to anyways it's like you're going to think of me badly anyways then might as well i might as well live up to that expectation yeah. <laughs> it i was not trying to break anybody's expectations at that point <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And when did the? I mean, you grew up around movies uh, on so many different levels. Uh, your mother side, father side, uh, cousins. Uh, mm. But when did the movie bug bite you really? Like you know, okay, I want to do this. I. It never bit me. Oh, it never bit you. Oh, it never bit me. Um, I got into movies because of the fact I never wanted to get into films. so i kind of got into it by ooh it was just like kind of a coincidence and it was a happen stance perfect timing mm. whatever you may call it and uh, i kind of did a film and no it didn't do well at that point of time but i had a great time doing yeah. it and i was like wow you get paid for this <laughs> this is fab <laughs> i mean i worked like a dog in that film like yeah. we were like like we really worked like like uh, like from like 4 o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock at night that kind of work but i had a great time i worked mm. with amazing people and uh, you know i had really, really i had some serious fun doing it so i was like okay if another one comes along i definitely think about it and yeah. you know and that's how it just kind of just kind of snowballed after that yeah. so i didn't really work with a lot of people that i didn't like i was like <laughs> that point, uh, yeah. i don't like you but i don't think i'm doing your film <laughs> and then you you took this decision of uh, dropping out of school also uh, like formal education right at that point in time was that like a was that a was a pushback from your family that complete your education i think my mom wanted me to right but i honestly didn't feel the need to at that point of time i was already doing two three films hmm. and i just i was just like it doesn't make any sense to me i mean what am i going to learn there or uh, what am i what is it going to add to my life and honestly i really am one of those people i feel that us is i have huge uh, you know issues with our system of education yeah so yeah i have i have big issues with the way people are taught and uh, you know what we are expected to learn in school and one of the biggest reasons that uh, I, i did my you know i finished my 10th and after i finished my 10th i realized i hated studying yeah i hated it mm. and i was like i was i'm a curious person like mm. if you tell me uh, if you give me trivia i'll probably ask you 20 things about it correct but if you give me a history book i'm like why is it important for me to learn that this happened in 1819 okay i get that it happened but why is it important for me mm. to learn the yeah. exact yeah. date and yeah. how is it going to affect my uh, you know understanding of history mm. at that point mm. of time So, like I said, I have huge issues with the educational yeah. system. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that was my reasoning, and I realized that after that, I actually went through my mother's encyclopedias. Mm. I actually started picking up, you know, the she had a whole stack of encyclopedias from A to Z, and I would pick up the encyclopedia out of just, you know, when I had a day free, and I would sit and I would just pick up the encyclopedia and start reading it. And I realized that's my curiosity. Yeah. It's coming back to me yeah. after I finished my tenth. Right. So. it was something that was killed completely correct <laughs> during my yeah. schooling years i didn't want to learn anymore so you were feeding that part of you that wanted the knowledge just not in the traditional medium definitely which was school yeah um and how did you kind of convince your mother i know that you were very sure because you were like okay you know that I, i'm i have two three films but i don't want to do it formally because it's a very difficult question that comes up even today for people so i think my mom was very brave yeah she is very brave um she made a lot of decisions for me and gave me a lot of freedom that i don't know whether i would have the courage to give my own daughter today right. so i would say that yeah she's one of my heroes that i look up to and mm. um yeah she never gave me a fight about it she's like are you absolutely sure about this and i was like yeah i don't want to go back i don't want to do this and uh, i don't think i need it anymore you know i'm okay with where i am and i think that i'm going to get better and this is it and she was like okay fine it's fine don't worry you'll be fine 
So, you know, do you consider yourself, um, you know, one of those few people who at a very young age had already found that this is what I want to do forever? Or do you think that it was kind of like you stumbled into it, then figured out that you loved it? You know, I stumbled into it and figured out I was good at it. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's more that, uh, yeah, it was more that than something that I wanted to do. I'm still searching for what I want to do. Yeah. I mean, I really feel till today that, uh, no, I haven't found what I absolutely want to do. I love to read. Yeah. And uh, I don't think that that can become a profession. I don't think anybody's going to pay me to sit on my couch and read a book. So, <laughs> especially not the books that I want to read. So, <laughs> uh, so we're going to do away with that part of my profession. Um, I love to crochet. I love to knit. I love to uh, just sit and, uh, you know, chill with my loved ones. So I think there's lots of things. I love to drink coffee. I don't think anybody's going to pay me either for any one of these things that I've just mentioned. Sit on the couch, read a book, drink coffee. Yeah. Uh, knit, crochet. So, no. <laughs> so I decided I might as well stick to acting. Yeah, it's paying. It's, it's paying, paying me. me. Yeah. <laughs> Things so, like they say, that you should be, you know, you should have one one hobby that you, the one hobby that you enjoy, yeah. one hobby that pays you, yeah. and one hobby that keeps you fit. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, maybe the coffee and the crocheting doesn't keep me fit. Yeah. <laughs> but it keeps you interested. But it keeps me interested. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and uh, you know, since you were so young when you got into the industry and you did a couple of films, uh, we've seen a couple of interviews, you know, where you've mentioned that you were often termed as a very unconventional stereotype in terms of looks when it came to actresses. Mm. Uh, there were comments on say things like your unibrow or mm. just things that today are considered like, oh my God, how can you say that? But back in the day was said with all guns blazing, right? Yeah, absolutely. How did that affect you? Because you were very young when you entered. Did it affect you? And if yes, then how did you deal with those kind of judgments? So. I don't think I really dealt with it, right. to be very honest. I kind of just put it into a compartment and um, and I put it away. And um, I just thought that, you know, I was way more intelligent than all these people who are commenting on me. Yeah. And uh, I still think that. But <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm just so cool, you know. I'm just intelligent and I'm cool. And the people who get me, get me. And the people who want to look uh, past that will see me yeah. and the people who don't want to look past that it's fine your choice you know yeah. bad taste bad taste <laughs> <laughs> like it's the problem is in your taste not mine exactly still so. there uh, was there ever a, like you know there's were there ever down days where you considered that of course low there days? were yeah. of course there were i mean there were a lot of tags at that point of time i mean there was, was a lot oh she she's dark she's fat how many things? How many things? Uh, she's dark. She's fat. Uh, she wears her specs all the time mm. because I couldn't see. So I would wear my specs everywhere. But hey, I thought that it was like at least they wanted me to climb the stairs, right? So yeah. I, mean, I need my specs to climb the stairs. Yeah. So yeah, so there were lots of things that uh, lots of people told me. But I was like, I'm still doing well, right? Despite all that. So there must be doing something right in yeah. that whole uh, this say uh, in that whole baggage of things that they put on me. Yeah. So yeah, it was just, it's that, like I said, yeah. I couldn't really take them that seriously. Yeah, like beyond a point because you're still doing amazing work. Uh, and in 1993, obviously, Bazigar happened mm. and it, you were cast opposite Shah Rukh Khan and yeah. it was considered one of the many iconic films that you've done. What was that like? What was that first day on set? Do you remember? It was honestly like every other day, honestly. I loved Abbas Bhai and Mustan Bhai till today. I'm still in touch with them. And they're, they're just amazing. I think I was 17 at that time when I started shooting for Bazigar. It released when I was about 19. But I was 17 and my my uh, contract was actually signed by my mother. Oh yeah, because you're underage. So yeah, I was underage. So my contract was actually signed by my mother. And if you speak to Abbas Bhai and Mustan Bhai till today, they're like, I was our set. Pe aai thi. I remember Sarojji and um, at that point of time, I really was like, I was about 17 and a half when I met Sarojji. And I remember everybody had warned me about Sarojji, you know, she's very, she's very scary and, you know, better not mess with her. And, uh, you know, if you say one word to her also, she'll turn around and she'll like give it off to you and this and that. And I went on set and Sarojji loved me. <laughs> I don't know, it was something, she just loved me. I think she adopted me. 
she she became my mother on set <laughs> i was fab so i don't know it was like i was taken care of yeah you know by everybody including sharukh for that matter i mean i think um, he was really really he's like you know it's okay we're living gruff but he was like okay you must do this and you must do that and he was trying to give me tips on acting and i'm looking at him like mm-hmm. oh <laughs> i'm listening i'm listening <laughs> So, uh, but yes, I did understand what he said like five years later. But <laughs> at that point of time, yeah, yeah. I was listening. <laughs> yeah, you were just like nodding, yeah. <laughs> like okay, tell me more. And how did that success play out for you at such a young age of nineteen when you got it? You know, you were. You know, success is something that I've seen a lot of, and fortunately, like I said, it's it's a lot. It's a part. Maybe I've seen it from a young age. Success and not having success, both sides of it, really, and. Um, that's half the reason why i feel like you know you can never take it that seriously hmm. i feel success is such a huge responsibility yeah. that uh, if you take it seriously then it really becomes a burden on your head and i never wanted um, you know for it to be a burden on my head so i never took it that seriously and i never uh, made it a responsibility i was like okay it's part of my life whatever whether my film does well or my film doesn't do well it is still going to be my responsibility whatever happens mm-hmm. and uh, so success and success is never only mine mm-hmm. it is an entire film there are there's a director there's a hero there's a there's the dop there's you know everybody involved mm-hmm. in the film it's never about one person mm-hmm. so it's I, i never thought that was only mine it belonged to so many people even then like even not then. looking back even no, at that no, point no, in time no no even at that point wow yeah it it was just about too many people you just can't claim it for yourself it's never only about you that's so refreshing to hear because i think that 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 concept in today's day and age it doesn't like it doesn't exist right like a success does tend to get to people's head there's a lot of there's a lot of circus stuff happening around the tone yes, success yes there is yeah. yes there is but like i said maybe it was the way um you know where i'd been and um you know maybe it was the fact that i'd seen both sides of it mm-hmm. i'd seen people not succeeding and i had seen people succeeding and i had seen uh, you know i had seen the way people react to success yeah. and i was like i will never be that <laughs> <laughs> what not to do that's not going to be me yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely i'm not going to be standing out there like a big guy and say oh my god <laughs> yeah. after that there were obviously a string of movies with shahrukh khan which were kuch kuch hota hai ddlg which are just like i can't believe i'm sitting with simran from <laughs> ddlg because it was so iconic uh at that point in time what what was what, was there ever a point where you were like okay I've seen so much success. I've seen so much love for these characters especially. I've made the country fall in love. What do I do next or how do I reinvent? Was that ever a thought that came in your mind, you know, that I want to do maybe a different role. Maybe I don't want to do uh somebody who, it's it, as part of a love story. How did the how did that process shape you as an actor? So that was something that was always there in my mind. It was never about uh, it was I always had like I always wanted to do different things. That's probably why I did a Gopt yeah. or why I did an Undhar ki zindagi also for that matter. I didn't want to tell the same story again and again and again. And um I just think that whatever I've done after that also, I feel like you have to keep reinventing yourself. You have to. There's no two ways about it. And um when social media came into play and then you had the OTT coming up and things like that then i realized i was like you know you have to really go out of your way to reinvent yourself yeah. because whatever we've learned so far i realized that whatever i thought worked in front of the camera didn't work anymore yeah it just didn't work it was just like i was looking at it and i was like you know this is just not working and out of everything else out of everything else at least i know for a fact that i have to be truthful to myself right maybe i can lie to you maybe i can lie to you but i cannot lie to myself Correct. at least when i'm watching myself on camera and um, that's something that you know you have to you have to be like brutally honest with yourself mm. to say that ha theek hai this is not working mm. and you have to do something different and whatever that is maybe it's working with different people yeah. maybe it's looking at yourself the way somebody else would see you yeah. rather than how you see yourself in the mirror every day yeah so 
yeah, you have to keep doing that. You have to reinvent yourself again and again and again. But obviously, the favorite characters were the these these two or three films that we've said for the country. Mm -hmm. And how did I want to ask this? You've made people fall in love. Uh, you've there was a unrealistic uh, notion about love up through these movies, which was beautiful. How did your love story begin? My love story was nothing like that because I'm nothing like Simran. <laughs> I know. Like no chance. <laughs> Yeah. Like I was like, I think anybody who watches my interviews from time immemorial know that I am not like Simran at all. So yeah, this is unrealistic. The expectation that you're talking about was probably because uh, because I'm not like that at all. Um, how did my love story start? I don't know actually. It just kind of, uh, you know, it was just there was just like I was going out with somebody I think he was going out with somebody at that point of time and we did a film together mm. and we kind of became friends yeah. from there you know standing sitting on set you spent so much time on set just mm. sitting and waiting for the shot to get put up or you know rehearsing or this that so I think you just spend that much time and you you know you're able to talk to the person that you've been you know you have spent that much time with and uh, yeah so we just started talking became friends and then eventually I broke up he broke up and then we became a little more than friends. <laughs> <laughs> and at what point did you know that he's the one? That you want to spend the rest of your life with? I still don't know whether he's the one. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think he'll be, I think he'll be, he'll be telling me, I'm like, mm, duffel. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, we are still here. And like I said, we have been, like I said, I think that it's got to do with wanting to work yeah. on it every day. And I think that's something that... Um, I mean, any married couple will tell you that it is work. It's a hell of a lot of work. It is not easy. And uh, that whole thing about that, it makes it sound so beautiful that, oh, when it is broken, that, you know, you go and you fix it with gold and it looks better. It's shit. That's crap. That whole idea is crap in a relationship, by the way. So, yeah, it's got nothing to do with that. I think you, it breaks every day. <laughs> you put so much gold in it. <laughs> You know, now it's just gold. Yeah, now it's just gold. There's <laughs> nothing left of what was there only. But uh, yeah, I think it has to do with just kind of like you have to say, you have to reinvent yourself. You have to... Even in a marriage. Yeah, you have to. And you have to look at it differently every day. There are new things that you have to accept about each other and uh, learn. And, and people grow yeah. and people change. So I am very different from what I was at 21 and 22. Of course. And he's very different from what he was at 30. And uh, so we still find each other a little interesting. I would say that's the biggest thing that I can say about us right now. That's what's ke keeping it going. That it's that there's still that <laughs> interest level. <laughs> After uh, this, these parallels of, you know, your success and uh, when you decided to get married, a lot of people thought that, you're at the apex of your career, right? When this, when you took mm. this decision, and for an actress back in the day, it was like your your career is, or over. like over, or like you know your 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 like so who's going to. So that's how? something. That's something that I just feel has to do had to do a lot with the actress's perceptions of themselves also. Right. It was not so much everybody else's expectations because you had a Saira Banu before that, you had a mm. Sharmila Tagore before that, you had my mother, you had Nutan, you had like a whole battery of Nargis. Mm. I mean, one of the biggest stars of the country was married at the time that she did Mother, mother India. So, I mean, like, you're not talking about, it's like there is a history that yeah. we're talking about. It was just, I think, their own perceptions. That right. oh, once you get married, then ye kapreni penne or aise to bahar nahi jana hai. And you know what will society say if you kind of uh, you know right. go out there and you're hugging another man or whatever? It was it's it's your own perception of how you see yourself. Hmm. You see yourself as a wife, and therefore you cannot do these things, or you, therefore you cannot uh, you know work in this profession. So it's I feel it had more to do with that than me being actually a trendsetter or right. anything like that. So for you, it was never even really a choice. It was just, this is happening as a part of my life. Yeah, definitely. And my career will continue parallel. Like, like I said, so it had a lot to do with uh, me, my mother working Correct. throughout her life and me watching that. And uh, like I said, I just thought that my aunt, mm -hmm. you know, Nutan mm -hmm. and my mother, and I just saw them all. They just went about their days and it was a part of life. Correct. It was not a part 
from your life and it was never something that you uh, looked at and said wow what a fantastic job i am doing see how wonderful i am and it was nothing to doubt home about it was just something that you just did yeah so it was just so normal yeah. that why why is it anything else exactly yeah and i was never worried that oh am i not going to get films after that or anything like that i was like no it's okay i can do this yeah. <laughs> i can take a year off and i can you know it it'll work out it'll all work out on that note how do you think the industry has changed i've seen a couple of interviews where you said that back in the day you didn't even, there was no manager there were no like yeah. stylists or you know this whole entourage that actors have today i think i think it was more much more intimate i think people knew each other better at that time um i think they had one person to do five jobs instead of seven people to do five jobs so i think it had a lot to do with just um i think social media has a lot to do with uh, the whole uh, you know it's like if you had an office i'm just giving you a very very broad example it's like having an office and having everybody you know seated around on their desks and then you have an office which has partitions <laughs> you know you put everybody behind a partition how would it change things yeah and that's exactly what happened because um, i mean i don't remember sitting and eating my lunch alone for the first 10 years at least so i don't remember sitting and eating my lunch or my breakfast or any of my meals alone you always sat with somebody there were like 10 people sitting over there everybody sat and ate together um tea was chai was like everybody had chai together and um whatever we did it was just more it was just just really really more comfy like stupid things like everybody knew the names of everybody on set it was just something that happened organically yeah. it was not something that oh everybody came and introduced yeah. themselves or anything like that but it was just the same people that you kind of landed up working with yeah. again and again and again and um, so it was just it was that and we didn't have social media so it was like you didn't have your phone to sit constantly and get glued on it to. yeah so if you're going to spend a 50 days with somebody and you don't have your phone to sit and you <laughs> get you will normally turn to the person next to you and chat Correct. and talk and connect so there was a lot of that and um, i think we just enjoyed making films much more than uh, people do today because i don't think people enjoy making films anymore i feel they look at it as work they look at it as uh, something they have to do or something that they are good at but uh, but it's not an enjoyable it's not having fun not everybody goes there to have fun yeah. like i go to work to have fun i make sure that everybody around me is having a good time chilling have eating food uh working and just generally having fun i think that that's the whole i at least i go to work to have fun yeah. yes work yes we must work work is important yeah. but yeah i think that that camaraderie i don't think any i don't think a lot of people i would say 90% of our film industry feels like that today yeah yeah it was more like an Im- immersive intimate no process. but it's also it's all, it's also like i said it also has to do with the partitions correct you know everybody is separate now you know you have the dress department which is completely separate you have the lighting department which is completely separate i mean everybody is like a, you know kept they kept separate also yeah. and they keep themselves separate also here if you had like if you had an ad he would be in like every department <laughs> <laughs> you know he'd be fixing the lighting also he'd be fixing the dress also he'd be fixing the you know he'd be like acha theek hai are usko bol dena mujhe ek glass pani lane ke liye so he would be doing that also so here you have like everybody is very like correct um i'll have a glass of water so <laughs> you know please call dress uh, i need this fixed nobody else will come up to you and help you do it yeah. at that point it's time. that person yeah it's that person who is meant for that job will come or be called so it's it's really that yeah yeah and um, i think that leads to a certain kind of i don't know a certain kind of like everybody has boundaries yeah yeah so it's good in a way yeah i mean it's good i don't want everybody in my space whom i don't want but yeah yeah it was just more comfortable it was a all. different time yeah it was a different time and in that time you made and uh, we didn't have vanity vans oh really <laughs> yeah. 
So that's one thing I really thank God for vanity vans. I really thank God for vanity vans. Like <laughs> the, the word of gratitude for today is for vanity vans. Yes, yeah. definitely. No two ways about it. <laughs> it's in that immersive process that you've made some friendships that are very important to you that you've spoken about, right? Whether it's Aditya Chopra, or Karan Johar, or Shahrukh Khan, who are, who are part of your growing up, uh, your entire career. Hmm. So as the industry evolved to what it is today, how have those friendships evolved? You know, I think when you know people for so long, yeah. it just becomes really, it just becomes really, really comfortable. It just becomes really, really comfortable. And you know for a fact that whatever happens, whatever you are like. I remember I went recently on Karan's show hmm. and I'm standing over there and I'm looking at him and I was about to say something. And he immediately interrupted me and he's like, <laughs> he's like, just keep quiet now. Just keep quiet. Just keep quiet. Just hug me and keep quiet. What happened? Shut up. <laughs> so he knew. So he knew before I even could even say it, he knew I was going to put my foot in it like with like my size 12 feet. <laughs> so he kind of stopped me. And and really that's what, um, that's like really like what you grew, when you grow up as, I mean, it's literally... Like a really long time. I've known him since I was 16 and I'm, yeah, much, much older now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's largely unchanged, even though the, this dynamic no, has changed. it has changed. Of course it's changed. But it's changed as, as we have, as people and grown. I mean, there's lots of stuff that we talk about today that we could not have spoken about at that point of time. Correct. And um, we have much deeper conversations than we did then. I have to say that. Okay. I don't know whether that's good or bad though. <laughs> I'm still doubtful about it. <laughs> yeah. On the subject of deeper conversations, um, uh, parallelly, of course, uh, outside of your acting and your career, your marriage was uh, uh, into the the growth stage or, you know, you were planning for a baby. You spoke with us, in fact, about a miscarriage that mm. happened. Uh, is there ever a translation into work days when so much is happening on the personal front? When... If you're dealing with something as uh, emotional as that, hmm. has it translated or how have you dealt with it? How have you coped with it? I think that that's something that translates to professionalism. I believe that at least in my case. So for me, it really doesn't matter. Yes, it matters to me, but it should not matter to my work. And that's the level of professionalism that I have. That fortunately, I am, I am able to say with complete honesty today that I have never had to cancel a shooting because of a personal reason. Maybe one day I have done it for uh, just one day or maybe two days out of my career mm. of like 32 years that wow. I've been working. Yeah, so I, that's two days out of 32 years, which I think is a good um, good balance. I think we've, we've worked through fever, cough, cold. Um, you know, anything that happens at home, fights, everything. We've worked through all of it. And, um, you know, you take a person, go to work, <laughs> finish it all off, deal with it once pack up is announced. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you have the time and space to do that. Yeah. And does it get difficult to kind of balance that, that, that personal life when your partner and you are both so busy and you're also both successful, both, uh, you know, on different schedules? It, does it does it get difficult to it is difficult it's not easy at all but i think again it comes down to you know what you have to adjust you compromise and like i said marriage is, is work every bloody day of your life so don't get married unless you're willing to work hard at it really <laughs> really don't <laughs> keep the boyfriend girlfriend status it's much easier <laughs> amazing yeah so, but yeah, it is, it's hard work each and every day of your life and um, that's it. You just have to know that and keep going with it. Okay, now we have to ask this question. Um, you know, there's so much more awareness today about like certain stereotypes like we were discussing earlier mm -hmm. even. If you were to do Kuch Kuch Rotai today or if it was real life, which mm. one would you pick? Which one would I pick? Yeah, if it was not a film. If it was not a film. If it was not a film. Which one would you pick? Because a lot has been said about Rahul. Oh, she should have taken, she should have gone with. Uh, yeah, like why? Martin because, is. you know, she became beautiful, her hair became long and she had yeah. the kajal and mascara. 
I don't know honestly. And honestly, if I was Anjali, Anjali would have been wearing her track pants throughout the film. <laughs> My version of Anjali would never be wearing a sari. She'd wear those track pants and she'd wear like fab sneakers with it and expensive sneakers with it and make that look good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but which one would you pick as a if it was not a movie? I don't know. On script level, hmm. uh, probably on script level, yeah. maybe I would have gone with Salman's character. But in the film, I think if you watch it as a film, then there's no choice about the ending. It has to be the way it did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about your comeback film. Comeback film. How many times have I come back? What about that's which what, comeback what, are you talking that's about? That's the first. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's what. That's why I had the sarcastic quotes. Uh, which was my question that do you ever think that you left to make a comeback because I, you know like i said i think that um, i think as actors we should be we should as human beings actually i would say as human beings we should be allowed to we should allow ourselves to take that time out mm -hmm. and do what we truly truly want to do and i really really wanted to be a mom and um, i had a baby because i really really wanted a baby and that's my responsibility and uh, that's what i really really wanted to do mm. so i think that's that's just it there was no question about it there's no regret about it uh, there's no great big sacrifice mm. either mm. there is no sacrifice at all i would never say never tell my kids that oh you know it's because of you that i did not work for so many years nothing like that yeah i i loved taking care of my kids i loved all the tam tam that went along in the first year i was completely nuts for the first 6 months to a year i was nuts i mean i will frankly admit it that i had gone completely bananas and over the top overboard on another level altogether and uh, i admit it today i did not admit it then so Back then you were like this much, is much much later yeah. <laughs> At that time, I was willing to fight. Us. No, this is how a mother should be. <laughs> but yeah, right now I'm willing to admit that maybe I went a tad bit, tiny bit overboard on that particular front with the hand sanitizer and whatever. whatever. But, <laughs> but yeah, so I, and I took that time out, and um, I never thought that it was. Uh, I never. Th I was not scared of it. Mm. I would. There was no fear. There was no doubt. एंड आई फेल्ट दर अगर काम मिलना है अगर आपकी किस्मत में है तो आपको जरूर मिलेगा कोई आपको रोक नहीं सकता आपकी किस्मत से और आई जस्ट आई बिलीव दैट आई बिलीव दैट समथिंग दैट इज मेंट फॉर यू इज रिटन फॉर यू नो बडी कैन टेक दैट अवे फ्रॉम इफ यूर मेंट टू हैव एन एक्सीडेंट यू विल चेंज दैट सो वॉर एडवाइस वर यू गिव मदर्स यंग मदर्स हु आर से यू नो डीलिंग विद दैट how do i should i leave my kid at home or should i be hands on or you know like so many different choices so many different strings attached to motherhood what what is your take on motherhood and the advice that my you give my take on motherhood is that each mother is different mm. and uh, each mother has her own way of raising her child and she has to figure that shit out she cannot take i feel that no mother should take advice from any one else including your own mother because it's it's a mess it's really a mess because you will have like 120 people telling you that oh this is my opinion mujhe lagta hai ki tumhe aise karna chahiye mujhe lagta hai ki ye khana chahiye mujhe lagta hai wo karna chahiye and um, you know you have to do what you think is right yeah regardless of anything what everybody is saying so like i said like just stop listening to traffic hmm. and just do what you think is right for hmm. yourself and for your child and nobody else's opinion matters mm -hmm. because that is your responsibility and nobody else is going to be blamed for it yeah. and nobody else is going to get the credit for it either yeah so you have to stand up for yourself and agar credit milna hai to aapko hi milna hai agar <laughs> yeah. you know blame milna hai to wo bhi aapko hi milna hai so you might as well that do it the way you think that it should be done Correct. right you and you can't blanket the fact that you should either be a stay at home mom or a working mom it's different no, for it different no it is different it, yeah. different children have different needs yeah different children have different needs there's um i, I remember there's this uh you know young mom i in my building when we just got married i think we were in our what second year i had got married and uh, she had two kids and she had a son who had downs and she had a daughter who was very normal but who was a year younger than the son okay. now the both the children would come down to play 
and the mother would come over there in the evening. She was a working mom. So what she did was she enrolled her son in the school with her. Okay. Now nobody could have told her that. Yeah. Nobody could have told her that this is not the way you do it. Mm. You know, I, she must have had a hundred um, opinions. opinions around her to say that ye nahi karna chahiye, wo nahi karna chahiye. She's obviously done it the way she wanted to. Right. Now whether you want to criticize her, whether you want to praise her, credit, blame, jo bhi karna hai, she's done it her way. Correct. And you know, hats off. Like I said, each mother is different and each child is different. So that's my advice. Don't take anybody else's advice. <laughs> okay, we'll go into our next segment. It's we've done a lot of research on you, and there are these things which is really scaring me. What do you mean by a lot of research on me? We just sat, that sounds watched, like odd watched strange. videos, gone through articles, dated like years ago. That must have been fun, no? Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> um, things about you that we can't find on Google. Google is. Why I not the answer to the world? <laughs> no, but let's add a few few pointers. <laughs> You're an avid reader. Which book changed your way of thinking? A lot of books. A lot of books. Um, which book changed my? I wouldn't say it's a book really. The fact that I read changed my way of thinking. Yeah. The fact that I had people come up to me, you know, and uh, my fans actually come up to me and tell me that, uh, you know. I'm so glad that you read, and thank you for reading, and you know, thank you for. I think that's one of the best, best compliments, compliments that I've yeah. got. That uh, you know, the, I have fans who've come up to me and said, "No, thank you for picking up a book," you know, because it it made my parents accept the fact that I read, because yeah. I told them I said, "See, even Kajol reads." Yeah. So I mean, she's cool like that, and you think she's cool? Why can't I pick up a book and read? Yeah. And she's not a nerd. I am I'm a nerd. <laughs> I mean, I'm definitely. But uh, but she's not a nerd and why are you calling me one? Yeah. And um it's that's that's that changed my thinking more than more than anything else really. So I I feel on all my books I would say that I I read a beautiful line in a book hmm. that said that when I read a book I can be whoever the character is. Black white old young animal plant and uh, i know exactly what that person feels like mm-hmm. that's why i can see the world as it is yeah and not only from one point of view mm-hmm. and i thought that was that was an amazing uh, definition yeah. of what a reader does actually so when you're reading a book you're actually reading a book from these seven eight people's perspective so and you're actually putting yourself pla- into their places so whether you're reading about a young boy or a or a horse for that matter or or a mole or an ant or a or a man yeah you know you have put yourself into their place and you're able to understand how that person feels right. it builds up your compassion it makes you understand the world from another point of view mm. Which character of yours do you relate to the most? Which character? I think the tomboy Anjali. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I <laughs> like I I vibed with that chick. <laughs> She's me. She's me. Yeah, yeah sh- I got her. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite uh, Shah Rukh Khan memory? Lots of things really. Oh, my favorite Shah Rukh Khan. Too many. <laughs> Something that's not on Google. <laughs> Says, I don't think my memories of him are anything there on Google. Also, I don't think I've really. Uh, you know, Sharukh is very like, like there's lots of stuff that we've spoken about. Yeah. Like it's all about conversations, and it's all about like we've talked about a lot of things. And uh, the one thing that I always get from him is my favorite thing about him is the fact that he just works so hard. till today and that he is just i i really have to respect that about him that he's not lackadaisical mm. or not taking it for granted and um, you know like you said that success has gone to their head and things like that but i've never seen him with success gone to his head i've always seen him on set in the same way and um, yeah if he's like a little quiet on sets he has been very very quiet on sets also and uh, not very talkative but the 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 ethic towards work 
has always been very very strong work ethic and i really really admire that about him whether it you know takes him 16 hours or 17 hours to finish the shoot he would sit patiently never complain about you know how long you kept him waiting or um you know walk off in a half mm. or uh, you know say anything like that yeah. so i find that that i find always i find that amazing about him because he's been working probably as long as i have if not no no definitely more than yeah. i have yeah. for sure yeah yeah definitely more yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. like like 40 years down no no you've been working 40 years I think it was four or five years before you joined. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, about yeah. That must be around about it. <laughs> You've mentioned that you love me time. It's sacred. So when are you yeah, most I mean, the you? When are you most you? Um, before I put on my makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely before I put on my makeup. So any time before I put on my makeup, I am the most me. Yeah. Um. But I I think that's probably one of my failings that I cannot stop being me either even after I put my makeup on. So <laughs> yeah, I have that tendency to just be me most of the time. Yeah. A myth about Bollywood you'd like to bust? A myth? Yeah. Oh, that we know what we're doing. <laughs> Nobody knows. Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody has any bloody idea about what they're doing. Really. <laughs> what does a Sunday afternoon at your home look like? Pajamas. lots of mutton and uh, oh lots of coffee lots yeah. of coffee yeah one person who can make you smile on the gloomiest day lots of people can make me smile on my gloomiest day but my son and my daughter definitely nissa makes me laugh yeah. nissa is her sense of humor is amazing she's just and she crack these one liners and i'm like rolling on the floor by it i'm yeah. like she's like her sense of humor is fantastic she's hilarious yeah and my son just looks at me and he mom he comes and smiles at me and looks at me and melt like marshmallow <laughs> one thing you want to tick off your bucket list oh my bucket list my bucket list i do want to travel more with my kids i want to definitely go back to egypt oh wow i definitely want to go back to egypt i think that that's that's on my bucket list i want to do egypt with my kids when we were last in egypt okay three days oh okay yeah. oh yeah 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 of course so after that i haven't gone back <laughs> it's just so happened that i haven't gone back and um yeah i want to do i want to do the pyramids i want to click a picture with me and my kids in front of the pyramids wow that's okay. on my bucket list i have to do that <laughs> at some point in my life <laughs> <laughs> okay your favorite ajay devgan film who too many really i have I think one of my favorite films of his was Company. Oh wow. I loved Company. Yeah, I thought movie. it was yeah. one of the most amazing performances. Legend of Bhagat Singh. Yeah. Zakham and uh in recent times I would say Runway 34. Yeah. Oh wow, it was a really good. I movie. loved yeah, yeah, Runway 34. Yeah. I really liked him in that film as well. So yeah, that's mine. Okay, now we're going to show you quick photos. You have to just tell us what was happening in the background. Okay, like we've got a few photos. Yeah, memory is not that great, ah. Huh? Okay. Ah, uh, see, this I know. <laughs> oh, you know? Yeah. But what what was happening? Not a great memory. I don't think I should be telling you about this memory. No, but I tell. I will tell you. Yeah. <laughs> One, two lines. So this I was telling as usual. If you can make out from my expression. and my hand coming out over there i was telling the paps move out of my way photo mat lena photo mat lena so this yeah one. this was so hot we were shooting in town for bazigar mm. and i was wearing this little hot little yellow jumpsuit mm. and uh, it was so hot it was so hot we were shooting in a little park and sharuk was supposed to do <laughs> and we were supposed to put this umbrella and oh, cover ourselves whatever in their you know typical manner in the typical filmy manner and it was like we were both like i don't want to cover myself i, I want to keep the umbrella up only i want to put it down at all at any point yeah. and the last one was oh this was for durga puja this was for durga puja this was for the sindur khela on the last durga puja i think Yeah, like last year? last no last to last year's Durga Puja. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay, so amazing. The last day of the Durga Puja, and uh, as usual, we all think we look stunning, 
on the Durga Puja. So we're all like supremely well dressed. <laughs> okay, and last question. You're known to be someone who's so comfortable in her skin. Like you just own it. You walk it. A lot of women struggle with that. What advice would you give to young girls and women who are struggling? Fake it with till that? you make it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Fake it till you believe it. I have struggled with my own skin. I have for sure. Um, I have struggled a lot. I have struggled to believe that I'm beautiful. It took me a very long time to believe that I'm actually beautiful. I thought I was cool. I thought I was attractive. I thought I was intelligent, but I didn't believe that I was beautiful. Mm. And it took me a very long time. It, in fact, I think I was thirty-two, thirty-three mm. when I actually began to look in the mirror and said, "Damn." <laughs> it looks good. So yeah, it took me a very, very long time to reach there, but I never let it show, and I went out there and I was myself. And um, like I said, you fake it till you believe it, and eventually you'll believe it. And so yeah. you'll make it then. And you will make it. Yeah, you'll make it there. Amazing. Thank you so much for the time. Uh, yeah, it's well, been pleasure. so lovely and. Uh, this was on my bucket list. So, <laughs> like I, I'm just like all your roles and just how iconic you've been. It's uh, it's thank amazing so for us at Humans of Bombay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you like this episode, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon. Thank you all for being the best community, and I'll see you soon. Small towns they give you they give you a different kind of hustle, right? They give you the hustle to break away from the rat race mm -hmm. rather than be a part of it. And I think that um, is what Lucknow has given me and I'm so, like I said, I'm so proud of being a small town kid.